So I've certainly heard the phrase, if you don't use it, you lose it. Is there any truth to that, especially in regards to ED? Well, as terrifying as it is, that's partially true. There's a combination of factors like, a, like everything else. There's a decrease in what's called functional penile length. Uh, what this is, is uh, the, that stretch of that tough fascial layer, that connective tissue of the penis, tends to retract over time if it's not engorged. Um, now this loss is fairly minimal, so you know, don't, don't, go, don't go freaking out. But then over time, unfortunately for us guys, is our waist circumference increases. As our waist circumference increases, that extra adipose tissue that lies overlying the root or the base of the penis actually decreases the amount of functional penile length that we have available to penetrate our partners. And that can be frustrating as well. So, you know, the best thing that you can do for all of this is keep on using it and keep on being active and maintaining an active lifestyle and, you know, trying to reduce that waist circumference, trying to keep that blood flowing to the penis. And that activity with the penis keeps that tissue healthy. It does, yes, that's correct, yes. So it's, it's a normal cycling, you know, those nocturnal erections help with that. You know, they, that's the body's way of doing it, but that, you know, you can take matters into your own hands, so to speak. Why do ED symptoms increase with age? Well, the prevalence tends to increase, one, because of those increased, as we age, we tend to accrue those medical comorbidities, those medical problems, hypertension, obesity, coronary artery disease, decreased cardiovascular fitness, but also it tends to happen as we age is our serum testosterone level tends to decrease. Testosterone is vitally important for the function of the penis, not only, as I mentioned, for that arousal, that libido, that limbic system component of desire and erectile function, but also that, that lining of the big vein of the penis, the, the endothelium of the corpora cavernosa, is dependent upon testosterone. Otherwise, it tends to atrophy and just not fill with blood as much. So current guidelines recommend the initial evaluation of patients with ED include a serum testosterone. This is something that I encourage you to discuss with your doctor. And he may do penile tumescence testing or serum testosterone measurement, but just have that conversation because that's something that uh, you know, won't get better if you just wait it out. How would I approach age management? Well, things change. In your 20s, your hormones are doing really well. A lot of times your body fat is not as high as it is as someone in their 40s or 50s. Maybe you can get away with eating a lot of junk food and not gain weight or, or feel bad in the morning. Uh, maybe you can drink a lot of alcohol and not have a bad hangover. Once you get into the age of around late 30s and 40s, going out all night uh, is not really an option anymore. You can't go out, go to the bar, drink all night, and then perform well at work the next day. So well, there's different goals for everybody at different ages. So once once you get into the later 30s, we start looking at your testosterone levels and we start to discuss what can we do to help optimize your testosterone. So we look at the way people sleep, their diet, are they eating a lot of highly inflammatory foods, high sugar containing foods, are they drinking sodas, are they smoking, are they drinking too much alcohol, their exercise patterns, are they lifting weights, are they getting out to do cardiovascular um, exercises, are they walking enough? We like to track a lot of things with our, with our clients with, with different kind of wearable technology. So we'll look at stress scores, looking at their uh, heart rate variability. If you have a low heart rate variability, that means you're gonna have probably less chances of living a long time. So we try to increase their heart rate variability by doing things like meditation, increasing their sleep and exercise and just getting outside in nature. So once you get over 40, things start to change. And we look at people's hormones, like hormones like DHEA and testosterone, estrogen, and, and progesterone in women. We also look at bone mass. We get things like DEXA scans, where we're looking at that body fat composition and their bone mass. And then we also uh, really look into their sleep. Because as we get older, we see that people really don't get adequate amounts of deep sleep and REM sleep. So it's a whole uh, different way of looking at things.